Steel is cheap. No one cares about reducing structure weights just to save on some steel costs, right? Wrong. And when you see the next bunkering bill, you will care too. Hello everybody, I'm Nick the Naval Architect and today we talk about the true cost of steel. So in the field of cost cutting, structural optimization is one of the first to go. People often decide to eliminate this engineering cost because really structural optimization is not about the safety of the structure. That's going to happen anyways. The structural optimization is about trying to prevent any extra weight and this applies to any material that you're building with. This is a very important. Once that structure is built, it can never be removed. And if you have weight overrun in your structure, you're going to pay a penalty for that over the life of your ship. You're going to pay it in your fuel bills again and again and again for the rest of your days, or at least for the rest of the ship's life. Why aren't people mad about doing structural optimization? Well, it's about how it's justified. People often try to reduce the material costs, but in many Western countries, at least, the labor cost far outweighs the material costs. So who cares about a little extra material cost when the cost of bending and welding that steel was the big issue anyways? And the cost of the engineering that went into it was also a major cost. So if you're trying to save costs on construction, well then you don't bother with structural optimization because you're trying to cut your engineering budget. But if you do that, you're missing the big question. The big question is, you have to look at this structure that seems perfectly sound and ask yourself, can this structure do the same job with less weight? Do I have weight overruns and how much will that cost me? How much will that weight overrun cost you? Quite a bit, actually. Here's a good rule of thumb. Any number multiplied by the life of the ship is a big deal. Let's take an example. The Maersk Triple E. I love this ship because she is one of the biggest ships out there, which means it makes for great dramatic examples. I'm going to assume that the structural engineer didn't perfectly optimize the ship and if you look at just the underwater portion of the hull plating that there's maybe six millimeters of extra plating thickness that doesn't strictly need to be there. Now you might think well that's a very tiny portion of the hull. You're right it's only about a two and a half percent increase in the structure weight but that translates into 1300 extra tons of weight or when you do a quick estimate it turns around to become 2.8 extra tons per day of fuel burnt. Well what is the cost of burning another 2.8 extra tons per day? Four million dollars. That's right that extra 2.8 tons per day of fuel will cost you on average four million dollars over the lifetime of the ship. Now that's assuming that you've got about 7,000 engine hours per year, which works out to roughly 80% of the total hours in a year. And some general conservative estimates for fuel consumption and cost of fuel that you can see on the screen. It turns out that your, that simple two and a half percent increase in structure weight is costing you 212 thousand dollars per year in extra fuel. Now here's where it gets really painful is you start doing that again and again and again and long-term engineering economics kick in we have to worry about capitalized costs and over the lifetime of a 30-year lifespan for this ship we are looking at 3.9 million dollars of extra fuel bills. But 3.9 million dollars? You could almost buy a, a small ship for that one. Myself, I'm picturing a silver yacht reflecting a crimson sunset in the Bahamas. Yeah! Now, as I said, I picked the Maersk Triple E because it makes a great dramatic example of how much lost savings you could be incurring. Four million dollars. 
What if every single ship in your fleet was saving you that much money? But you're probably realizing, well, it's not going to be that big of a difference for every ship. So what about my ship? You can try it yourself. In the description below, I put a link to the spreadsheet. You can download it yourself, put in the numbers for your own ship, and check on your own lost savings. Because when you're trying to justify structural optimization, the true cost of steel is not the material cost. The true cost of steel is a lifetime of fuel bills. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Yes, we have reached the part of the show where I ask for tips. So please hand me your tips. In this case, I just need you to click that little subscribe button. Subscribe. <laughs>